Hey guys, Shurim here, and today I am going to be testing the Holden Coupe 60 in multiplayer. Now this car has been in the game for a long time, and it used to be one of the best multiplayer cars in the game, so let's see how it performs now. My rank is 1493, with a tuning of 0502, and in Pro Kits, 5050. Typical multiplayer tune for a top speed oriented car. So now for our first race, which is on San Diego Harbor against a Camaro, an MP48, and some other cars. Even when I perfect nitro at the beginning of the race, I still start up faster than the Camaro, which, as we all know, starts very slowly, and so I'm able to knock down him and get past him. It is a good practice in most cars, or all cars at this rank really, to try to knock down Camaros, because they're faster than any other car at this rank, except for the SLK, I suppose, and knocking them down gives you a much better chance of winning. As you can see, I have now passed that MP48, and I can go 281 miles per hour at this rank, which is about 25 miles per hour slower than a Camaro, but nearly 20 miles per hour faster than an MP48. The Holden drifts quite decently as well, even when multiplayer tuned like it is now, as you can see I can get around this corner with not much of a problem at all. So thankfully this was a one lap race so the Camaro has no chance to catch up and here we go finishing ahead of him and the MP48. So let's see what their ranks were. The Camaro was a 1488 triple boosted one and the MP48 was a 1475, both around the same rank as me. Now we have a race on Patagonia against another Camaro and another MP48 and guess what? We also have a homage in the race as well. That is the one that just passed me right there. So the homage does start up slightly faster than this car actually because this car does have below average acceleration. At Max Pro, this car is nearly equal to the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT3, which is the king of B-Class. This car can do pretty much as well as the AMG on most tracks in the game. So if you have this car and not the AMG, and you have other multiplayer cars, you might just want to go ahead and Max Pro this one. But give it a chance first in multiplayer, because it is very good. This Holden goes about the same speed as a Vulcan tuned to around this rank as well. So, we are now in second place, but we are running out of nitro because of this car's awful nitro efficiency. I believe it ties for the worst in the game. A 10, 15, 20, if any of you know what the nitro efficiency rating means. It has to do with the percentage of the single tank used up in a second, I think. Something like that. It's kind of confusing. But if you ever see someone give you nitro efficiency numbers, just know the lower the number, the better. So the Camaro is the one right up ahead. He is very slowly pulling away because he is a faster car. That homage is the one that is catching up behind me. Again, not very quickly. This car does have a good enough speed at this rank to be able to stay ahead of a lot of these cars and keep up fairly well. The Holden is the fastest B-Class car at this rank, even faster than the TVR Cigaris. And since it has much better drifting than the TVR Cigaris, this is probably a slightly better multiplayer car around the rank of 1500. But extra tanks is very useful in this car because of the bad nitro efficiency. Some of the races in this video will be running extra tanks and some will not to give you guys a taste of what it is like driving the car with and without extra tanks. It's not necessary, but it is definitely helpful. So we are coming up pretty close to the end of the second lap on River Fort, and that homage is ever so slightly closer to me than he was before. Right now I'm stealing his nitro so that he might run out and that will give me an even better chance of beating him. So he has taken the shorter route down to the right, which could possibly be faster in really top speed oriented cars but I have still managed to beat him. And he left, I guess because he was in third. It's usually good to leave when you're in third. So what beat us was a 1487 Camaro, but we beat a 1489 Homage. They were both triple boosted like me. I apologize for the occasional lags in this video. It didn't happen in my game, so it is something with my recording software. But they don't happen too often, so don't worry about that. So somehow, again, I have avoided being knocked down by that homage when he touched me and am able to get ahead. I personally think this car is one of the most boring looking in the game. I'm not exactly sure why they designed it as they did. It's kind of like a Bentley. It's just not much to look at. Sorry if I offended any Bentley lovers, but that's kind of what I think of them. 
and I was able to make this car purple. However, there are no decals for it. I think Gameloft should go back and add decals for the cars that are not able to have them currently. I'm not sure why they made some be able to have them and some don't. Some it just wouldn't work very well on, like an MP425, for example, but other ones like this one. I mean, a decal would look really nice on it, I think, and shouldn't be too hard. As of me recording this, I only have the final AI left to do in the 650S R&D, so probably by the time this video comes out, I will hopefully have the car. Unless, I guess, I fail the AI. I'm trying to win it at a low tune of 1680 rank, so I can test it in multiplayer. I believe the tune I have is the best tune for multiplayer, but as you'll see, it's still not great. Also, I have completed five of the eight tours in the Aranera Hesera GT Championship, and so hopefully I will be getting that fairly soon as well. So we have come into second place, the Homage ahead of us wrecked, and we only have the Camaro, which is actually the same one that was ahead of us last time. His name is Wilson Moretta ID, and I believe he watches my videos. So if you're watching this, Wilson, nice races. I enjoyed racing against you. So again, we are finishing ahead of that homage. The homage is not as good at this rank as it is above 1600, so I would recommend to anyone who has homages to tune above 1600. I think he stayed in because he knew he'd lose seven because he'd already bailed once, and he figured he would probably lose less if he just stayed in. So now for a race on Munich against, again, Wilson and another Camaro and an MP48 that just bought me on the back, which may have given me a slight acceleration boost. I'm not sure, if a fast accelerating car hits you from behind, do you actually get any more acceleration than you would otherwise? I am not sure. So the general routes that I take in this video, such as going to the right up here instead of going to the left, are the best general routes for this track. There's probably some little tricks and stuff you can do to get a better time, but not many people have learned them yet, so here's just the basics. I personally think Munich is one of the nicest looking tracks in the game, if not the nicest looking, just because it has so much variation in color in it, especially purple in some places, so that's really nice. Now here is a section of Munich which has a crazy amount of ways you can go up or down. As you can see, you can fall down two whole levels. I think it may take a while for people to figure out which of these is actually the fastest levels to go on because there's such a small difference between them. But I'm sure someone will figure it out. So one Camaro is ahead of us, but there are two Camaros behind us, I believe, and that MP48. And I believe these are the only other cars in the race. Yeah, so there's no civilian cars, you might say, which is kind of rare. The Assembly Cup currently running for the Holden is nice in the fact that all of the blueprints are very evenly distributed. You don't get half of them if you're in the top 25 or something like that. No, you get 8 out of 10 if you're just in the top 2,000. So you only have two left to get, and it was given out in the previous season, or some of the blueprints were, if you were in Pro or Champion. So it should be fairly simple for a lot of people to get this car and not have to spend tokens on it like I did because <laughs> I bought it for tokens purposely before it changed into blueprints so I wouldn't have to collect them. But then this cup came out and the multiplayer season gave them, so it was kind of a waste of tokens. But hey, I get the car early to show you guys. That's always a plus. So one Camaro beat us, but we beat two of them, one of which was nearly 100 above me. So now for our final race in the Holden. In this car, it is best to pick two laps on twisty tracks. Let me explain why. So voting two laps makes it a lot easier to catch up to MP48s, which again are quite a bit slower than you, but on a one lap track, they might still be able to beat you. Picking Twisty tracks such as Dubai or Sector 8 or Tenerife or something like that are good ways to have a better chance of beating Camaros. So yeah, if you do that, you will be able to beat MP48s and Camaros a lot of the time. Camaros probably less often though because a lot of them are extremely skilled drivers and an extremely skilled Camaro driver will likely be able to beat this car on most tracks. However, around this rank, the Holden can beat pretty much anything else fairly reliably, possibly struggling against the occasional Homage and Vulcan, but besides those in the Cigars, probably not much else. So I would say this car is definitely worth it to get, even if you bought it with tokens. Because it is a good multiplayer car, number one, and can beat the majority of cars around this rank, and at Max Pro, it is a B-Class King, and will likely get you top 1000 in B-Class heats. 
probably even top few hundred if you drive it really well. So I do believe the tuning I have now is the best tuning for this car, allowing it to be faster than any other B-Class car around this rank, as I believe I've said earlier. So thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and found it to be useful, and please consider subscribing for more Asphalt 8 videos. And I will see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>